Ladies and gentlemen, we ask that you please take your seats at this time as the program will begin momentarily. In this video, I will give you a short introduction to assessment. After all, it is difficult to innovate assessment if it is not fully understood first. Assessment is an important part of learning and forms part of the so-called big teaching triangle of constructive alignment, in which learning outcomes, teaching and learning activities and assessment are intrinsically linked with each other. A course is said to be aligned when all of these items operate at the same Bloom's taxonomy level. A simple example of an aligned course could be this. Imagine a simple lesson in French. The teacher has set the learning outcome that students must be able to count to 10 in French at the end of the class. In class, the students are taught the numbers one by one by watching a video and by repeating each number after the teacher. The teacher then plays a numbers game with the class, with students having to say the right number when they are given a turn. At the end of the class, the teacher has each student count to 10 before they are allowed to exit the class. Each student that does so successfully gets a macaron. In this example, the learning outcome, counting to 10 in French, is achieved by first learning the numbers, practicing counting in class, and is verbally assessed at the end of class. All three are in alignment. However, if the teacher had assessed the ability to count by asking them to write down the numbers 1 through 10 as written text, the course would have been out of alignment. The type of assessment, writing of the numbers in French, does not match the teaching activities which were mostly auditive and verbal, nor the learning outcome, which specified the students must be able to count. It did not specify they had to be able to write out the numbers. This is why selecting an appropriate assessment method is so important. It has to be related to the specified learning outcomes and supported by the relevant teaching and learning activities. Assessment has many different purposes. It supports learning, it supports instruction, it informs students of their progress, and it informs the teaching practice, as well as that it's used as a form of accountability. Hence, an assessment method must be valid. Does it assess the learning outcomes? Reliable. Does it leave little room for subjectivity? Efficient. Does it not disturb the learning process, but also is it affordable in terms of time and money? And most importantly, acceptance. Assessment has to be acceptable for students, staff and the binder community. When working in active teaching settings, such as in the flipped classroom concept and in work-based learning, assessment used is often also active. Students are often asked to go beyond a written exam or computer test, producing essays, solving problems, writing code or designing and developing projects. Assessment in these contexts does not just take the form of a grade, as some of the feedback, but is often given in a more qualitative way, as formative feedback. With increasing student numbers, formative feedback is often very labor-intensive for teachers, who have innovated their courses by using a flipped classroom or work-based learning approach. This is why many of these teachers are taking the active component in these concepts a step further, and introducing a new innovation in their course. Having students give each other feedback. This concept is known as peer assessment. In summary, when innovating your assessment in a flipped classroom or work-based learning setting, ensure your course is still constructively aligned and uses appropriate assessment and feedback methods, such as, for instance, a form of peer assessment. 